Welcome to this BEC podcast. My name is Rasmus Beck, and today with me, uh, one of the Grimmy brothers. Hey, Christopher, welcome to you. Thank you. It's always a trick because I really hope it's you. Uh, because I, and, and I will admit, I asked you yesterday because, uh, and I'm not the first one, and I will definitely not be the last one to ask you that question. But, but Christopher, my first question is basically how is it to always know that people do not know who's who? Or oh, 99% of the time? We aren't identical twins. Uh, a lot of people do think we are, but um, there are some some differences, especially if you've seen us more often than maybe you'd see. Um, I like to say I'm a bit taller, but he wouldn't agree with that, probably. <laughs> no, no. But 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 Christopher's, uh, of, of of course, your brother's also here in Kiev, where we are right now, and and uh, and you guys play together, you practice together, you you do basically uh, all your professional life together as a badminton player, and that and that's. Might, must be a good thing, I suppose. Yeah, well, I don't think any other pair would know each other as well as we do. Um, I mean, we've played together since we were six years old, so um, maybe the story of our sisters. I mean, they're yeah. sisters, but being a partnership in us, like as brothers, it's it's good. I do enjoy it. We don't argue. Um, but how is it to? Uh, I, I have a brother myself, uh, yeah. uh, a bit younger than me though. But uh, for me, it's it's nice to know that he has his separate life and he he's living his life. I'm living mine. We are we have a good connection. But that that's it. Um, how is it always to know that? Okay, I go to work today with your, your badminton. He will be there. You might even go together. Yeah. Now we travel together. We share the room together. You know, we can just continue down the line. How is it? I feel like we are together like twenty four seven. But we enjoy it, like, we get on really well. Uh, we've got like the same friend group as well. Um, we study the same course. Uh, we do an open university course and we do the same course. We've, we picked all the same classes in school, so literally there's not many differences. Do you coordinate that or is that totally right? No, like, we just both got the same interests, I'd say. Um, yeah, and we've always played badminton, so quite a lot of our friend groups involved with badminton. Um, so that means that we're together <laughs> most of the time. And you're also together on court, uh, Christopher, and, and of course uh, you guys are very young still. Uh, hopefully we'll be see, sitting here for 15 more years, uh, at least 10. Um, but, but what is the big end goal for, for you guys? Uh, well, we're still young, we're only 21 just now, but definitely to try make it to the top and like, try get major titles like Olympic medals and Commonwealth Games medals, world medals. That's definitely the goal. Mm. Being uh, being Scottish also means that uh, you're not necessarily representing Scotland, yeah. uh, but Team GB. Yeah. Uh, for instance, at the Olympics, uh, there's no need for us to talk Tokyo because uh, yeah. it might not be that relevant. But 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 looking looking at it, uh, you will always compete against uh, the English guys, uh, the Welsh guys. And the Northern Ireland guys to 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 make it to to the Team GB squad, is that a good ta- good kind of competition, or, or is it actually kind of annoying saying, okay, if I was just Scottish here, uh, I might have made it. Yeah, I mean, it, it does make it harder for selection, um, but like it, it helps us to try push on more because there's more competition. Um, like I, I was, I've actually competed for Team GB at the Youth Olympics, so. I like I would I would love to represent Scotland and Team GB. It'd be an amazing achievement. Um, but yeah, it just it just gives us more. It it gives us more of a chance to try beat these top players. Even the English players there's a lot of good English players. So um, it just gives us more goals. Yeah. Of course, it's it's also related to politics. Uh, but but I remember the European Games. Uh, Team GB was represented by. Uh, I think it was nine out of ten were, were English players, and then then uh, Kirsty was there too, uh, as the only one. Uh, w- when do you think that we will start seeing Scottish players actually make it more like a 50-50 or 30-70 uh, split with, with with the English ones? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, there's definitely a more a lot more depth down in England because there's more players playing in England than Scotland. Um, but maybe a, like a Team GB setup would be good so that we could go down and train with a lot of the English guys or even some of the Irish guys. Um, that would be nice because we did that uh, a couple years ago. We went down to train in Milton Keynes and it was it was amazing just to train with a lot of the other guys because 
especially in men's doubles just now it's only really a few pairs in Scotland there's not that many pairs so it was nice to get a mix up of playing against a lot of the other English players and we do get on well with quite a lot of the English guys there um, a lot of them are our age so um, yeah a lot of them are nice guys but I'd like to see maybe Team GB set up again because it was in the past but then the funding got cut and it was just more separate England and Scotland and would you would you be willing to actually move permanently to to England if that was what it take? Uh, I'm not sure. I've never actually thought about it, but um, I would maybe go down because I mean, quite a few Scottish players did that, like the older players, maybe like Keaton Merrilies. Um, he went down and he's lived there for a while, so um, it would be a good opportunity. But I don't know if that would happen again. No. No, and that's a question for the politics and, and, and the governance, of course. Um, Christopher, uh, we've also seen, of course, we've seen you guys on, on, on the men's doubles court quite a lot, uh, also through your youth career. Um, we've also seen you playing the mixed lately uh, with Elno. Uh, what, what is the big end goal and what's the big plan for, for doing so and not just focusing on one category? Yeah, I enjoy playing mixed, uh, especially with Eleanor. Um We've actually we've actually played quite a lot as juniors as well, um, so we know each other really well. Went to school together, and we're in the same friend group as well. Like we've known each other for years, maybe since we were maybe ten, eleven years old. So um, I'd say maybe the goal for us in mixed is the same as my men's doubles to try push for medals at these major events. And we're we're quite um, we're not very highly highly ranked just now, but. I think if we can get into these higher ranked tournaments and get more points, then we could. I think we've got potential to do well um, in Europe, definitely. But it also means that Scotland now actually has two uh, decently good uh, mixed doubles with Adam Hall and, and Julian McPherson being the other one, uh, both represented here at the European Championships. Uh, what does that tell you, actually, that you now have two pairs who are actually able to compete on, on the top European level, which it is when you qualified for the Europeans. Yeah, it's great because um, we can train them with Adam and Julie. It's really good because obviously their uh, their level is really high um, and it pushes us on. So um, learning from them as well, Adam and Julie are a little bit older than us, so they've experienced quite a lot more than us. And even though they had a, quite a tough draw this week, um, they're definitely one of the top pairs in Europe, I would say. You also, uh, in your youth, also had some uh, some success in the singles. Uh, that that's no secret. Um, as far as I understood, there was a choice made that okay, now we focus on men's doubles, not singles anymore, and now we swap in the mixed doubles instead. So so then it's what well, well, what's the balance here? Uh, I enjoyed playing singles. Um, I just thought that I, I I did prefer doubles and mixed also, but. Um, the singles I kind of stopped just after juniors. I played a few senior tournaments in singles, but um, I just thought I could maybe go further in, in my career in the doubles and mixed. But but, but, but why think you so, Christopher? Because correct me if I'm wrong here. You finished uh, number one on the ranking, right? Uh, as as a junior, yeah. um, that means that you have some kind of potential, right? Yeah. Um, of course, you also finished quite high on the rankings in, in the doubles, but, but when you're ranked one at, as, as a junior, it might have looked silly for, some, for, for a lot of, of, of the viewers and the fans to say, okay, now, now he quits uh, to, to, to continue where it might be less secure, uh, less secure way. Yeah, I'd, I'd just probably say it was my preference to uh, play men's doubles and mixed. Uh, obviously, men's singles is really, really tough just now. Um, um, and there's a lot of good players in Europe and and in all over the world. So I wouldn't say men's doubles is a lot easier. It's obviously really tough to make it, but I felt there's more of a chance of me making it in the doubles and mixed disciplines. But let also let's also be fair here, Christopher, because when I look at the Scottish team, there's no question where the weak point is. It's not in the women's singles. It's not in the doubles. It's in the men's singles. Yeah. You might have been that one who could actually fix that problem for for the Scottish team. Um, what were the considerations about that, um, or are because there it's was, still an issue? There's not that many men's singles players just now in Scotland, but there's a few youngsters coming up, like 
Joshua Pelaga, there's Keir Pringle, uh, Callum Smith. There's quite a, and their level is getting a lot better just now. Like Joshua beat Max Wershkeik in, uh, in Finland. Uh, he took Anders Andersen quite close in two sets. Uh, so there's definitely potential in some of the Scottish guys, but um, there wasn't that much depth in the men's singles. Um, like the older players, well, Keed, after Keaton retired, there wasn't that many players that were following in his footsteps. It was just more the juniors coming into the seniors. So I felt like there wasn't that many people to train with as well. So, um, yeah. So that's the main reason. Yeah, that's probably the main reason. Because, for, from, for instance, in, in Finland, of course, there were some good results. Yeah. Uh, but I also remember that I saw you play in the, at the qualification a few yeah. years ago. Uh, I remember you interviewing me actually. Yeah, exactly. And 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 I'm still thinking, how come they can produce a player like Kirsty? Uh, they can produce talents like yourself, uh, Eleanor, the brother, uh, Julie, Adam. Uh, list continues. They produced a talented women's team who actually medaled at the uh, at the team event in 2020. But the men's singles is the weak point, and it's Looking at the ranking only, it's quite far from the other teams we actually saw in Finland in February. Can, can you try to explain why it's, it's, it's so difficult for the Scottish team to actually build up that men's singles group? Uh, I'd say men's singles is probably the most difficult discipline to succeed in. Um, obviously all of the disciplines are hard to succeed in, but that's the, the most popular discipline uh, that everyone will play. So. I feel like in Scotland, I wouldn't say the players are lazy, but like to reach that top level, there's a lot of sacrifice and that you would need to make to make it to the top. And I just feel like there's not enough players in Scotland just now playing to have a a big group to compete against in men's singles. There's only for now there's only three, three or four men's singles players in the senior setup just now, uh, which isn't that much compared to a lot of the other countries. So I'd say that's probably one of the main reasons why in Scotland men's singles does struggle. You said before that uh, for, for you and your brother and for you and Eleanor, it, it's, it's about aiming for medals uh, at some point, maybe not tomorrow, uh, but, but on the longer run. And there's also Commonwealth Games coming up uh, pretty soon, I would say. Uh, how much do you think about that in, in, in terms of planning uh, ahead uh, of your career? Because, of course, Tokyo is uh, hopefully uh, soon. Uh, there will be some World Championships before, but, but Commonwealth Games, of course, is, is, a, is a major thing. Yeah, it's just definitely this year is important to try qualify for it. Um, in the mixed, we would need to be in the top 65 in the world, in top 55 in the world to, to qualify and be the number one pair in Scotland, as well as... I think it's the qualification period is from 1st of March to May 2022, so this is an important period for us in the mix and the men's doubles as well, um, to just try to get as many tournaments under our belt and try to get as much points and climb the rankings. And yeah, because Commonwealth Games is a big, big deal for us Scottish players. Um, and I know quite a lot of other countries maybe don't know about the Commonwealth Games as much, but it's a big deal for us to represent our country at a multi-sport event like the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, it's it's for those who do not know, it's it's the colonies, uh, yeah. former colonies of, of the British Empire, yeah. uh, competing, and of course uh, Scotland being included here. Yeah. Uh, and as far as I understand, uh, the best pair is going, but but there is an option actually for for two pairs to make it. Yeah. Uh, so so if you do good, you and Eleanor, you can, uh, and you and your brother, you can actually make it, right? Yeah, hopefully that's the that's the goal for sure. Yeah, but but. Why is it so important? And, and now I'm from Denmark, uh, and I've spoken to colleagues about it. Uh, I have an English colleague who says it, it is important. Um, but for us, who is not part of it, why can you please explain why it's so, it's so, it's so important? It, it's of course it's a multi-sport event, but but still, it's it's your neighbor. Yeah, I guess. Well, we've grown up as the Commonwealth Games and the Olympics being probably the, the biggest tournaments you could go to to represent like your country, and so. I feel like that's probably the reason because we hear so much of it like when we're in school and that that's like the 
the major goal of the Commonwealth Games and the Olympics for us. Um, yeah, that's just that's always been the goal as we've been little kids. Um, so yeah, I'd say. Mm. Christopher, the last topic I would like to touch today is uh, one where I, I, I do, I'm not looking for a political decision and, and opinion here, but uh, Brexit uh, has been a thing and it's a reality now. Uh, how has it affected you as, as a professional athlete, uh, if at all, uh, until now? Uh, I feel like it's, it's not affected us yet too much, um, but um, I mean, I'm just going to try keep training and competing as much as I can. It's it's uh, out of like my hand, so um yeah. Mm. I, I, but is it something that you, you think about when for instance you prepare travels that okay we might yeah, need to need search a for a visa or something. Yeah. So uh, is it something that actually in uh, influenced the way of, of, of preparation and, and, and Yeah, it could it could be um but I mean we'll do anything to travel and so if it means that a little bit more preparation for tournaments or um i mean we'll do it because it's our job and part of the game part of the game mm. christopher last question here uh you said that yourself you're young uh, and i said that i hope that i'll see you 10 ten years down the line from yeah. here when we sit here 10 years down the line maybe not in kiev somewhere else what have you won and where are you then still playing uh yeah definitely i, I, ho I hope i'm still playing um Hope I've reached some of my goals, like like I was saying earlier, Commonwealth Games medals, hopefully European titles if I can, world medals, and hopefully Olympic medals. That's what the the goal is definitely. Perfect, Christopher. Thank you very much for stopping by. Thanks very much. It was a pleasure, and thank you for watching the BC podcast. <laughs>